Mark Striegel here with Talking Metal. We have the one, the only, the legendary Paul <laughs> Diano here with us tonight. Very honored. And Paul, welcome back to the United States. It's been, you said, 17, 17 years, years since yeah, you've been cheers. here. Cheers. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah. It's nice to be here. And uh, I guess the troubles are pretty much sorted out, or are they still kind of no, 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 it's all good, it's all good. Yeah. <laughs> nah, did the time, done the crime, did the time, and you know, I'm all good now, good to go. Good. Yeah. So uh, I, this visa lasts for a year. Um, you know, they gave me the visa last year, but as I said, I couldn't accept it. So, uh, you know, uh, hopefully I'll be doing many more tours here until I retire. Good. About another two years. <laughs> no, another two years. Yeah. Well, let's let's talk about what's going on here. You have a, a, a this is a new band you're touring with the states. This is with? a new band I'm I'm using here, yeah, because uh, we was trying to get together with the guys a couple of years back. They're, they're based in Pittsburgh. It was it was a little weird <laughs> um, to to be doing this. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like to get in there, but uh, yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. You got into New York City yesterday, looked around. This is a town you used to live in. New York. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. How has it changed since you've been here? Oh, Brooklyn has certainly changed. That's, yeah. uh, you know, it's, it's a lot better. It's a lot yeah. cleaner and stuff. Yeah, but because um, I lived in Forest Hills and uh, West 57 and stuff like that, and uh, I got pissed off with the city because, you know, it's the same as London. It's just the cities, yeah. pretty much. There's not a lot of difference. We've got five boroughs over there, and... You know, I come from the worst part of East Side London, you know, which is pretty right. much like the Bronx and shit like that. So it, it doesn't change that much, but it has got cleaner, I noticed that. Yeah. But I got fed up there, so I moved to Texas like years ago, so that was yeah. it. And that was the start of all the troubles. <laughs> well, no, LA was the start of all the troubles. Well, you got it. You, you found your troubles in New York City, too, didn't you? You used to go out drinking with people like Ace Frehley from Kiss and stuff oh, like that. Oh, well, no, in the day. I think I'm drinking with Ace. I know Ace from when we did the Kiss tour and all that. But uh, oh. Oh, he's a dangerous man to be around. Yeah. <laughs> but no, nah, he's a good guy. But uh, nah, you, didn't, you didn't encounter him in the China Club and back in those days? No, I had my wedding reception in China Club, though. Uh, uh, yeah. We got married in Brooklyn. Me and uh, I was an English wife, uh, like my second wife. Yeah, we got married in Brooklyn. And uh, oh, that was hilarious. Because. Yeah. Uh, I, we, we was late for our own wedding reception because we were trying to get a taxi from outside of my apartment. Okay. And they crashed into each other, two see each other and hit each other. We're like, oh, fuck it, let's walk. So we walked down to China Club. Yeah. <laughs> I wanted to ask you, your voice and, and songwriting for that what matter voice? was such a... <laughs> <laughs> there isn't much one in a minute. <laughs> well, well, a lot of people consider your voice on those first two Iron Maiden albums to be such a part of that band's <sighs> history. <laughs> two, two of the band's best records, uh, at least according to the hardcore fans. Fans. Um, those albums continue to be reissued. Yeah. Iron Maiden puts out DVDs with old footage of you. Do you mm. continue to make money off of Iron Maiden, or is oh, this? Yeah, of course you do. Yeah, yeah. but uh, money was never an important thing about this uh, for me. I mean, I'll make enough money off my own records as well. So, yeah, right. but it's never been about money. Um, I got quite enough. You know, I don't need any more. Uh, this is why, hence why we're doing this thing, like 41 different bands around the world, yeah. keep the ticket prices down, especially in South America. Right. Because, you know, uh, that's my home, um, and there's not a lot of money over there. Right. You know, so, you know, we do these things for the kids, keep the prices down as best we can, you know. Some places we've done it for less than $5 a ticket and stuff like that, and, you know. Yeah. And always let about 200 in for nothing as well, yeah. you know, like get them over the wall in the back and stuff. And it's all good. Let's talk about the future of Paul Diano musically. Is there any plans at this point to do a new record? You're here touring. Yes. Will, will there be a new record from well, you? Well, when I actually point? finish touring, you know, I'm contracted. I find it really hard to write when I'm on the road. You know, it's very difficult because um, there's so many, there's millions of distractions going on, and it's really tough. So, and oh, I need to get home. I need to get back to San Paulo, and you know. Get, get in touch with the, with the city again, you know, right. and that brings it all out. You see so many different things going on there. Um, we did do five tracks in Germany last year. Okay. Uh, five, well, four new tracks and one cover. Um, well, I'm not going to talk anything about it. Um, but we've had a bit of a um, disagreement with a record company. Yeah. So who knows? I may not be using those songs anymore, which would be a damn shame because they were absolutely great. It was like really? very industrialized. Oh, cool. Which was, yeah, a lot heavier and industrialized. But... Uh, me and a friend of mine, Ben, in England, um, he's wrote about 18 bits of music, and I got about 10, and we're sort of linking them together. He's just sifting through it, what I want and use, and then he called me out the other day just before I left and said, oh, right, I've got about another 20 pieces here. Oh, wow. So when I, it's getting time, I'm piecing it all up together. Okay. You know, so, yeah, but he's very tough. Cool. Well, do you, I mean, we, A, hope to hear that stuff soon. And oh, look it'll, be, it'll be done soon, I'm yeah. sure. Um, I'll get around to it somehow, but I'll, I need to get it all together and piece it all up. You know, it's, um, 
having little bits and pieces is not enough, you know. Right. But, but you know, he's got some complete stuff, and I got a few pretty good ideas. So you know, we, we get it together. But <laughs> now, when you look back yeah. on some of the songs that you've written, uh, even some of the classic stuff with Maiden, mm. uh, you wrote uh, "Remember Tomorrow," mm. "Running Free," uh, "Killers." Mm. You, yeah. you you wrote. Can you tell us the meaning behind some of those songs? Let's start with "Remember Tomorrow." What well, is that actually tomorrow, about? But that was that was uh, one of my grandfather's old sayings. Always, and I, you know, always look on the bright side. Son, remember tomorrow. I always right. always stuck in my head that. And what about a song like "Killers"? That Killers you co-wrote with Steve. Oh, Harris. I tried to be a smart ass with that one. I was. Um, I was trying to do like, um, yeah. So obviously it's about a killer, you know, like somebody who's like very deranged sort of thing. And I tried to get it like um, his reasoning for doing that. Um, it didn't quite work out that way, <laughs> and, and then sort of get the, you know, the public's view of it. I, I didn't quite actually get it right. I don't think, but yeah. you know, but it was sounded good enough, so we kept it. But I was trying to do it in like a, a two, a two or three way thing, you know what I mean? But um, we didn't have enough. There wasn't enough time to get it all in, so pulled out what I wanted and then just kept it, you know, as it is. So it's basically just about the one person who's like deranged and likes yeah. to kill people. Yeah. There's a few of them over here in this country. Clive Burr has not been well physically. No. Have you heard from him at all? Do you know what <coughs> yeah. his current state is? Um, yeah, not very good at all. Um, I mean, um, last time I spoke to Clive, or well, tried to speak to Clive, he was, um, yeah, he sounds drunk all the time. He sounds like he's in his voice, you know. Michael right. Gross has got many different ways. He's a bloody evil disease. Um, he can't walk, can hardly use his hands now, and it's all in his voice. He sounds terrible. I mean, I've done... I think I've done quite a few Clive aids. Yeah. You know, um, I, I'll do as many as they want me to just to sort of help out because, you know, he's, he's a great friend and sure. I love him to death. But um, it's very difficult for me to sort of see him because I always want to cry. And I think that's yeah. the last thing he needs for me to do is that. But, um, you know, he's got the great support of Mimi, his wife and stuff. You know, she's also a sufferer herself. But, yeah, you know, I heard she's, that, yeah. Yeah, but she's got very little of it. It's all different stages. And Clive's is probably one of the worst stages you can ever get of it. Wow. But, yeah, it's so sad. Um, I don't know. I hope he's happy. Um, I don't suppose he would be, really, with that. But, you know, mm -hmm. as happy as you can be. But um, it's, we do this Clive thing because we're, um, we're trying to get all the money up for him to go and have this stem cell treatment. Oh, okay. But it's bloody dangerous as well, you know what I mean? Yeah, but risky. The thing, or, yeah, 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 the thing is, you, you know, he's going to die anyway right. of the molypus sclerosis or you're going to die at some stage. So, to me, I'd take the chance if it was me, mm -hmm. you know, because um, you've got nothing to lose. Right. You know, and it could give him something where he could actually walk again. I'm not going to say he's ever going to play drums again because I doubt that'll ever happen. Yeah. But, you know, a, you know, a lot more movement than that because um, when we filming that um what was it the early years or whatever it was for Iron Maiden right. we went up yeah. and done our bits the, the yeah I see Clive years. a couple of weeks before that and he was walking wow and then apparently he got up to get his remote control on the TV and fell over oh, backwards boy. and has ended up in a wheelchair and he's been in it ever bloody since wow yeah wow. which is bloody awful um because we, we were laughing about it at the time he said his leg in plaster then as well as he busted his leg but um, and we filmed our bits um within a couple of minutes of each other and that so we sort of hung out for a couple of hours out there and uh, mm -hmm. it was cool but me and Bruce uh we did a live aid a uh, live a clive aid for him right um about three years ago in London in in East London now uh, and uh yeah, it was kind of cool, actually. Yeah. Um, I think the kids liked it, having both of us there. But it was cool. Well, Paul, thanks so much for joining us on Talking Cheers. Metal. My pleasure. Good luck at the show tonight. We will be Thank there rooting much. you on. And, uh, Cheers. And welcome back to the, uh, to the United States Thank of America. Thank you very much. It's, it's good to be here anyway. Cheers for that. Thank and you. Hi, this is Paul Diano, and you are listening to Talking Metal. 